Hallelujah. I can hear you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Give him glory. Give him honor. Give him praise. Lift him up. Hallelujah. If we had 10,000 tongues, we couldn't praise you enough, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. We take this little bit of time. Hallelujah. You give us 24 hours, seven days a week. We'll give you just a few minutes, Lord God, to let you know how grateful we are. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 My brother Adam, if I told you that I get a workout before I preach, you might have wondered if I'm telling the truth. I'll tell the truth, brother. Hallelujah. I don't hold back from the minute I get in here to the minute we're done. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. This could be my last chance. Hallelujah. I'm not going to waste not one time. Hallelujah. And I've got my Marlene right in front of me. I am A-OK. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord if you want to and if you can. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. But so that I don't forget, welcome to all of you who are joining us online. Thank you so much uh, for being with us this morning. Uh, you could have hit the snooze button again. You could have uh, tuned in somewhere else. You could be somewhere else. And we thank you for trusting us to pour into your life. We thank you for virtually coming in and communing with us. Hallelujah. As we all lift up God, as we all glorify him individually and yet together. Hallelujah. It's got to be real. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I was thinking jokingly, only partially so, because you guys know how I drift into my neighborhood sometimes. And I was just thinking it's got to be real. And, and as the song said back in the 70s, ain't no future in what? In your front. <laughs> ain't no future in your front. And if you think you're going to get to heaven with one of those fake tickets, the scalp tickets, not going to happen. Hallelujah. It's got to be real. Your love has to be real. Hallelujah. Your connection has to be real. You've got to know that he is real. There's no reason to waste your life faking it. Hallelujah. There's no reason for that. Hallelujah. And I'm just grateful to God that we have this opportunity. I'm so grateful to God for this place. This place. God bless us with this place miraculously. And I'm going to keep saying it. Hallelujah. Because my stone of remembrance is present every time I walk through those doors. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Every seat was already here. Almost every computer was already here. All of the instruments we're already here. Amen. The baptismal pool, already here. Carpet, already Amen. here. Amen. Nursery, already here. Amen. Classroom, already here. Amen. To add to our amazing, miraculous, beautiful office right in the same complex, just a few steps over. God has been good to us. Amen. We're not in a hotel anymore, saints. Amen. Isn't that good? Amen. Hallelujah. God has been good to us. We have always been small but mighty. You better look out if we double our size. You better look out if we triple our size. We're talking about an impact. I'm talking about re not religion. Not religion. I'm talking about the real thing. Impact. So that somebody knows that God, the creator, has sat down with you and impacted your life and is inside of you. Not religion. Yeah. I'm talking about the real thing. Yeah. I'm talking about the Why would anybody serve your God if he's not making a difference in your life? Yeah. Why would they follow you if there's no light in you? Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. It's not my message. I'll get to that in a second. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mm, 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 mm. It sounds like somebody's listening to me <laughs> and there's a slight delay. We are still praying for all of those who are on the prayer list and especially for the family of Michelle Harold, our own Michelle Harold, as uh, her family, she and her family prepare to lay her sister Dawn Bradley to rest on this coming Tuesday. If you're interested in attending the services, please call our church office. You can, if you don't have the number or the information, 
go to our website, www.fggministries.org, and you can find all of it there. Amen. Just go to the Contact Us tab. One quite small thing, uh, parenthetically, uh, you guys may not realize this, but we are one exactly one week away from our 11th anniversary. We've been doing ministry for longer than that, about 21 years, but we've had a public ministry where we have ensured that there is a public space for people to come and commune and worship God with us, starting in the Four Points Hotel. Amen. Next week, February 12th, it will be exactly 11 years Amen. that we've been doing this work. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. And God has blessed some of us to, to miss no more than one or two Sundays in all of that time. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. And God has been so good to us. Now, uh, I now get the opportunity to say hello to my brother and my sister, Adam and Consuelo. I'm not going to ask you to say anything. Amen. You won't have to say anything. But boy, yeah, Pastor Trina, touche. Touche, Pastor Trina got all over me. I did teach, it's so true, she wasn't making it up. I was teasing her last night because there was a chance this morning that we would have had a very high dignitary here with us this morning. And we were preparing uh, to handle the protocol properly. Uh, that won't happen this week, it probably will happen next week. But in the process, I did mess with her a little bit and talk about how when somebody comes in and it's somebody that she is surprised to be here, how she boohoos. Now, you guys have heard her cry up here. She doesn't remember it. <laughs> Amen? She doesn't remember it. But my brother Adam and my sister Consuelo, I, I met them because I was their family physician. Amen. Years ago, I don't know, 30 years ago. Somewhere in there. And uh, as circumstances had it, uh, we were allowed to uh, bring our relationship outside of the, the medical facility. Amen. We were allowed to be friends. And that was such a blessing. And it is true. I'm going to be straight real with you. He, they were there for us when we were going through hard times. We were together as a couple, but we were going through bankruptcy. Amen. Hey, ain't no shame in my game. <laughs> Amen. He was a blessing. The things that, you know, don't, you know, right now you might not think that they cost that much, but at that time it mattered. And he treated us so wonderfully. There are things I was preparing to do. I was going to buy one of those cars that, what do you call it, salvage car. I thought it was a great car. And he looked at the car and he says, Mike, this car is crooked. <laughs> He said, don't do that. Don't do that, brother. I'll help you out. No, 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 no. You don't have to go that far. <laughs> Hallelujah. And he just did so many things. Whenever we needed something, he was there. They were there just embracing us and just uh, loving on us, not realizing how big of a difference it was making, not realizing that, you know, 30, 25, 30 years could go by and we would still be impacted by it. And uh, we hadn't talked to each other since our 50th birthday, I think it was. <laughs> His 50th birthday, birthday party. I don't think we've talked since then. And I'm on my way to, I'm all excited, I'm in a hurry, I'm trying to go to help pick up Luke from daycare for the first time, and I'm in a hurry, and I go to the gas station, and it, that pump won't work. It would not work. I, I had two credit cards, and it wouldn't work, and it tried to keep my card. So I'm in a hurry. Did you hear me say I was in a hurry? Yes. So I have to go to another gas station because I don't want to run out of gas. And I'm finishing up my pumping, and this gentleman starts talking to me about my car, and that car must really go fast, and why you need to go so fast, just being all <laughs> personal. And I'm like, oh, well, you know, I just like fast cars. That's all, you know, it's... I'm not trying to go real fast. I just like to get to what speed I'm going to real quick. That's all. I'm not thinking anything of it. And then he said one more thing, and I looked at him, and I said, oh, my goodness. I know you. 
you are Adam Saunders. And then it hit him, oh my God, it's you. Oh my goodness. Why do I tell you that story? That's a funny story to me. But look at what God did. If I hadn't had my credit card declined, I wouldn't have this brother right here in my life again. Come on now. Come on now. Come on now. If he had gotten to the gas station and finished what he was doing and got off that phone five minutes sooner, we wouldn't have reunited. Look at God. Look at God. And here he is right now. It's, it's, it's mind-blowing. Thank you so much for taking the time, Connie and uh, Adam, for coming to spend some time with us in the Lord. Amen. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. That is such a blessing. It's mind-blowing. It's kind of like this church. How God blew our minds. This has blown my mind. And, 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 and just on a lighter note, he also just purchased an e-bike. <laughs> and he purchased a helmet the kind that can connect us so we can talk to each other we don't have to take our eyes off the road and say hey brother I'm going to make a left right up here we're going to be safe with it amen hallelujah isn't it good how you can have good friendship good fellowship and also serve God yeah. serving God is not boring amen? amen you might be boring don't blame it on God if your life is boring, don't blame it on God. And his life is never going to be boring because he has Connie Consuela. Never going to be boring. You guys don't know. She's sitting here all quiet. Oh, don't let the smooth taste fool you. Hallelujah. <laughs> she is spicy. Amen, amen. Hallelujah. Well, I'm just so grateful to God for this day and this occasion, this opportunity, this miracle. This blessing. So thank you, Connie. Thank you, Adam. Thank you all for being here. And uh, I pray that the Lord will speak to you this morning in a, in a mighty way. Amen. Let's pray for just a second. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you so much for giving me yet one more opportunity to serve you. Yes. One more opportunity to exhale your word that you've planted inside of me. And Lord, I ask right now that you would use this vessel, Lord God, make up for all of my deficiencies. Take every word out of my mouth, Lord God, and plant it as a seed into the hearts of your people. Lord God, and I ask that even today, especially that you would prick the hearts, Lord God, of your people. Touch them in a way that they've never been touched before. Touch them in a place that they need to be touched exactly the way that they need to be affected. We pray this prayer in the mighty name of Jesus. And all God's people said, amen, amen, amen and amen. Now, we were truly blessed, were we not, with a powerful word of God from our pastor, Ragu, last week, were we not? Amen. 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 Can I get a hand clap for that? Amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. And two weeks ago, we talked about or we spoke from the subject of servant leadership. Amen. How many of you know that servant leadership, you can lead all kinds of ways, but servant leadership is the only way sanctioned by Jesus. It's the only kind of leadership that he instructed, the only kind of leadership that he taught. Servant leadership. If you just want to lord over somebody, you need to go somewhere else. If you want to just boss over somebody, you go somewhere else. If you want to just wag your finger at people, you need to just go somewhere else. If you always want to be bigger than your brother, have more than your brother, go somewhere else. Amen. And he wasn't trying to get us to have a flat, structure administratively but he wanted us to have a flat structure spiritually and relationally and so he washed the feet of his disciples to show them with his actions what he was telling them with his words amen and as we talked about servant leadership, we pointed to the fact that in order to be an effective servant leader, you need to embrace something called what? Come on, make me proud. Come on, those of you who've been with me a long time. Meta? Okay, there you go. I just needed to prime you a little bit. Meta? Meta? 
Amen. And for those of you who don't know what that is, just give me a little bit of time. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. It requires leadership repentance. You could point at the people and say repent, but you know what? It needs to start right here. Hallelujah. And the people are going to know whether you have a repentant heart based on how you treat them. If you give somebody power, absolute power corrupts absolutely. Amen. Everybody looking up to you, following what you say can ruin your spirit. But as people of God, as leaders of God, that's not how we are supposed to lead. Well, today we're going to double down on and reinforce this issue of metanoia. If you'll let me do that. Metanoia, repentance, true repentance is central to our Christian conversion. It is central to our Christian confession and it is central to our walk with God. Now, for those of you who have been with me for a while, even though you couldn't remember or you couldn't think of the word, you know something about metanoia. Raise your hand if you know something about metanoia. I'm going to ask every one of you that have been in this for a while, I want you to listen with fresh ears, with an open mind and an open heart, because even you might learn something this morning, because we're going to go just a little bit deeper. Can we do that? Can we go just a little bit deeper so even my OGs get a little something out of this? Is that all right? All right now. Now, we're going to title this message something really simple. I'll give Brother uh, Marcellus a couple choices. Repentance revisited or just as simple, revisiting repentance. Brother Marcellus will make an executive decision and that we'll find out when we see it online. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'll just say repentance revisited because we need to go there because it is so central to who we should be in God. And so we're going to go to the Bible and learn about this some more. Is that all right? Yeah. We're going to be learning this morning from the ministry of John the Baptist, the very forerunner of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the one who paved the way for his arrival. Yeah. Now, he is called John the Baptist because he introduced to the society the baptism of repentance for the remission of sins. And he also, he himself, baptized our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. But did you know, let me hear you say, did you know? Did you know? Did you know, did you know? Did you know that baptism wasn't, it did, didn't originate with the Christian church? Did you know that baptism was not new when John the Baptist came along? Most of us think that baptism started when Christianity started, but oh no! Baptism was not new to the Jewish people. This, there were a ritual cleansing by complete immersion in the Jewish faith and traditions called the Tevila. Write that down, Tevila. Amen. That's a Jewish word. Amen. That's a Hebrew word. And it is a word that, is, that is, describes the ritual cleansings by complete and total immersion. Now, we could go real deep because they also had to be naked. They had to be in their natural state. No makeup, no nothing. Amen. So the tevila was a ritual cleansing by complete immersion. And it had to be in a natural body of water, either already natural or a collection of raindrops. It must have been natural and it had to touch your natural body and complete immersion. That is called the mikvah. So you just learned two Hebrew words, tevila, amen, which is baptism to us. And the mikvah, which is the baptismal pool, if you will, which in the Hebrew tradition had to be a natural body and the body in it had to be in its natural state. There were several purposes for the tevila, amen, that would happen in a body of water called the mikvah. It was used for certain medical conditions. It was used every woman after her cycle, and if you know this, during her cycle, she was considered ritually unclean, but once that was done, she went to the mikvah, 
so that she could have a tevila so that she could be back with her people after her cycle every month. And after contact with a dead body, you were not supposed to be able to come back with the people. And so before you went back with the people after contact with a corpse or a dead body, you went to a tevila, amen? Or you went to a mikvah so that you could have a tevila. You went to a body of water that was appropriately set so that you could be fully immersed in your natural state so that you could come back into community. And then finally, there are other examples, but this last one, I'll just tell you, any Gentile that converts to Judaism, one of the many things that they must do is they must go to mikvah to have a tevila, and they have to be immersed fully like I described three times and each time coming up and reciting a blessing. And so baptism was not new when John the Baptist showed up on the scene. Baptism was not new when Jesus came on the scene. Baptism, immersion for spiritual cleansing was not new when Christianity came on the scene. But we say the word baptism. Why is that? That's because the Greek term, if you, I I hope you guys don't mind all this little background information, amen? I hope you don't mind. My my wife, she said I tease her, but she teases me. You all know this about how I use, you know, I break down the Greek and the Hebrew, amen? Hallelujah. She teases me about it. But it's all right to break through the barriers of language. It's all right to connect you with the language and the culture of the people so that you can transport yourself to be there, to hear what they heard, and ideally have the reaction that Jesus intended. And so the Greek word baptizo, spelled with a Z-O, pronounced like T-S or T-Z, baptizo, That Greek word means to submerge or to dip under. And this is why we get John the Baptist. Because of the Greek word, which in that culture, because they were now being dominated by the Romans, replaced their word, tevila. So this is why he's known as John the Baptist and and not the the, the tevila guy or the mikvah guy. Amen? That's why he's known as John the Baptist. What's the point to all of this? What am I I leading up to? What am I trying to say? Baptism wasn't new. So what was new? That's the question. We now know baptism wasn't new. So what was new? Let's go to the Bible and we'll find out. Let's go to Luke chapter 3. Luke chapter 3. And we're going to begin in verse 1, and I'll I'll read, and hopefully you have your Bibles and you can read along with me. I am reading from the King James Version, of course, as usual. You can read from whatever version that you have. I'll read verses 1 and 2. Now, in the 15th year of the reign of Tiberius Caesar, Pontius Pilate being the governor of Judea. I should say this a little differently. Now, in the 15th year of the reign of Tiberius Caesar, comma, because that's important. Who is he? Pontius Pilate being the governor of Judea, comma, and Herod being the tetrarch, meaning the society was divided into four parts, and that makes each arch a tetrarch who dominates or oversees a quarter, one-fourth of the territory, tetrarch of Galilee up in the north where Nazareth is, where Jesus comes from, his neighborhood, and his brother Philip, tetrarch of Iturea, and of the region of Trachonitis and Lysanias, the tetrarch of Abilene. Annas and Caiaphas being the high priest. So we have the secular leadership, the secular government, and now we're identifying the Jewish religious leadership, Annas and Caiaphas, one being the present high priest and one being the most recent former high priest like we just had with the Pope. The word of God came unto John the son of Zacharias, he was a miracle baby. Zacharias didn't believe God that he was going to get that miracle and God shut his mouth for the entire, made him mute for the entire pregnancy until he opened up his mouth praising God for his gift, amen? 
the son of Zacharias, a priest in the temple, in the wilderness. Why does all this matter? It's simply Dr. Luke's way, the writer, his way of precisely stating the time and the place and the identity. This man's ministry, his introduction matters so much. And, and Dr. Luke wanted to be so precise. He wanted you to know exactly the time and the place and the circumstances and the identity of this one John the Baptist who received the word of revelation and the calling of God as the forerunner of the Messiah, the Messiah, the anointed one. It's a big deal. I'm trying to put you there because it was a big, big deal. Now, let's go to verse 3. It says, and he came into all the country. We're talking about John the Baptist, and he dressed funny. And he taught, and, 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 and he, he was just a weird dude. He ate funny. He came unto all of the country about Jordan, preaching the baptism of repentance for the remission of sins. So this was the Tavila in the mikvah. He was the mikvah guy before he was John the Baptist. Amen? Amen. But he's now talking about not medical conditions. He's not talking about cleansing because you touched a dead body. He's not talking about Gentile to Jew. He's talking about something special now. Baptism was a new. So what was new? What was new is now he's offering something. They were used to dealing with sin, but it was through sacrifice of animals. They're used to dealing with the fact that they were sinful, but this is special and different. We're talking about the, a tevila, a baptism of repentance. And even, maybe even more unique and special for the purpose of remission of sins. We're talking about forgiveness. We're talking about you're dead to rights. We're talking about you are guilty as all get out. We're talking about there is DNA evidence of your guilt. And you get a commutation of your sin. You, you get to be innocent. You get to go free and you are totally guilty. Imagine that. Imagine how freeing that would be. Imagine how that would blow your mind. So he's talking about a tevila of repentance for the purpose of remission, not just covering your sins, but completely pardoning your sins, releasing you of the indebtedness to society and those that you did wrong to, the people, and more importantly, to God. Now, at this point in time, the Messiah, the Mashiach, was highly anticipated. There was electricity in the air. They just knew he was somewhere. They could swear he was right with them. They thought it was John the Baptist. So there was electricity in the air. And now you have this new Tavila. You have this new reason to go to the mikvah and he was popular because who doesn't want their sins removed? Who doesn't want to get off from the crime? Who throws themselves on the court and says, put me away forever? There was electricity in the air. The Messiah, the Mashiach was anticipated. We have this new kind of baptism. And then we get to verses four through six. Let's go there. So with all of that as a backdrop, it says, as it is written in the book of the words of Esaias, which is Isaiah, the prophet saying the voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. Every valley shall be filled and every mountain and hill shall be brought low and the crooked shall be made straight and the rough ways shall be made smooth. And all flesh shall see the salvation of God. This was written by Isaiah more than 500 years prior. And if we were to go to Matthew, in the interest of time, we won't. But if you went to Matthew, he makes it even more plain. He says, this is he. This John the Baptist, amen, this mikvah guy, he, this is he that was spoken of by the prophet Isaiah. So make no mistake, this is the guy. This description was one that was 
emblematic of back in ancient times when kings, especially kings from the east, when they came back, usually from a victorious military campaign, your job as his people was to make his entrance triumphant and smooth and perfect as honor and respect to give him the glory that he deserved as the king. It needed to be smooth. He needed to not worry what was in front of him. Amen. So you made it straight. You made it smooth for the king is coming. The king is coming. And it's your job to make it smooth. People would even throw their clothing down to make sure that the king and his animals and, and his troops didn't even have to touch the ground. This is why Palm Sunday is Palm Sunday. Because in the same way Jesus came on the donkey coming in as a triumphant king and they said, Hosanna, Hosanna, and they put down the palm branches. Do you see the connection? Do you see the continuity? Hallelujah. Are you connecting the testaments? Are you learning a little more than you knew? I hope you come away different than you came. Amen. Hallelujah. But the people, just like they failed to realize that Jesus' agenda was spiritual, they were expecting and hoping for and anticipating an earthly, a secular savior. A secular savior. But Jesus' objective was spiritual salvation. Amen? Amen. We want to have money. We want to have cars. We want to have houses. We want to heal our bodies. Amen? Because we want to hang out here as long as we can. But the real problem that you and I have and that they had was spiritual. Amen. They had a sickness. They needed to be healed. But it wasn't their bodies that needed to be healed. Because who wants to live forever here? So they didn't understand that his real goal was spiritual salvation. And in the same way, they didn't grasp the significance of repentance. And sometimes neither do we. And so they were making way for the king. And in their case, they didn't, he didn't need palm branches. He didn't need them to knock down hills. He didn't need them to smooth out the ground that he was going to walk on. But, but what they needed to do is recognize their spiritual state and their spiritual need. Because that's what he was here to fill. Amen. That's what he was here to solve. And as a result of you recognizing your true spiritual state and your true spiritual need, now that positions you for the solution that Jesus has for you. Because until and unless you realize your wretched state, you're not going to be in a position to truly accept Jesus Christ. You're not going to be in a position to take the solution that he has. You might say, I don't want to take that medicine. It's nasty or it make me sick. Well, guess what? If it's the one thing that's going to save your life, now you're in a position to accept the treatment, amen? Because who would accept treatment that's not good or doesn't make you feel good for something that's not gonna really matter? But when you realize your very life, in this case, eternal life, depends on it, now you're in a position to actually hear what thus saith the Lord, right? Now you're in a position to actually accept the real prescription. Now you don't, you don't wanna live here forever amen and you don't want to have your body working only for you to die and to go to the other place the wrong place so now jesus can have your attention now maybe your heart and mind can be open and he can heal your real sickness your sin sickness amen. let's go to verse uh seven <laughs> for where, where, where did i stop off at amen i said oh yeah all, all, all flesh so see the salvation of the lord so now we're on seven then said he to the multitude. Now they're all coming to him. There's electricity in the air. He's got this new baptism, the Messiah, the Messiah. He's got to be somewhere. Maybe it's John. And then make way for the king. So you know they're ready now. The king is coming. Our long-awaited Messiah, king is coming. Then said he to the multitude, he's popular. Now we're talking about how real John the Baptist was. He's popular. And you know when you're popular... When you want to fill the seats up and you want to keep the people in the seats, you know what you say. You say what they want to hear. Right. Right. So let's see what John did. I could roll with John. Matter of fact, I would love to roll with a whole lot of Johns. 
Hallelujah. Mm -mm -mm. It says, then he said to the multitude, I'm going to scratch your ears because I know they're itching and I'm going to scratch that itch and I'm going to tell you exactly what you want to hear because I want to keep all the people, I want to keep all the seats, I want all the likes, I want all the, all the popularity, I want you to read all my books, I want you to line my pockets so I can get all my planes and all my houses, so I'm going to tell you exactly what you want to hear, not John the Baptist. Then he said unto the multitude that came forth to the baptism of him, old generation of vipers, meaning offspring of vipers, poisonous snakes. Oh my goodness, this dude doesn't want anybody in his church. He was all popular. They wanted what he had. They're thinking he might even be the Messiah. He is like the man. And he says, you generation of vipers, who hath warned you to flee from the wrath to come? What is he saying here? He is saying, well, let, let me read just a little bit more. He says, who has warned you to flee from the wrath to come? And then he says, bring forth that, read this with me. Bring forth, therefore, fruits worthy of repentance. You generation of vipers who have warned you to flee from the wrath to come. I need you to come correct. I need you to bring forth fruit worthy of repentance, not just any fruit will do. I'm checking boxes through my Christian walk. I'm a Christian soldier. I'm checking a box. I did that. Check. Did that. Check. Did that. Check. Did that. I have my fruit, but is it fruit that'll tip the scales? Hallelujah. Worthy. That word in the Greek, what it means is talking about a scale. And if this is repentance, then your works need to balance the scale. Amen. So if this is repentance then what you need to bring to the table need to balance the scale. And you can do all kinds of stuff, nice stuff, good stuff, religious stuff. Scale is not going to move one bit. Right. Not one bit. Amen. It's got to be real. Amen. You've got to come to the mikvah desiring the right things. Amen? Yeah, yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. They were coming to the mikvah wanting a tavila just to avoid the consequences of their sin. They wanted their sin to be removed. They wanted their sentence removed just because they didn't want to do the time for the crime. What in the Greek he's describing is what, come on students, help me, make me proud. Metamelomai. Hallelujah. Repentance is the word we use in the English. But metamelomai, which means regretting or being sorry for what you did. We, oh, we, you, you probably think that's enough. Oh, I am so sorry for what I did. I really regret what I did. Why? Because you know you don't want to be toasted. You know you don't want to be in trouble. You don't want to pay the price. You, I regret that instance, but more is required. More is expected. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. The baptism, the tavila required, this special one required a different repentance. What kind of repentance is that? Meta. No, you see, you guys are good at this now. Amen. I hope somebody online is typing in metanoia. And if you want a little help, it's M-E-T-A-N-O-I-A, -A, metanoia, not metamelomai. Anybody can come to that. Nobody wants to go to jail. Nobody wants to do the time. Nobody wants the electric chair. You're not saying anything. I want the taliba, I, I, tavila. I want the mikvah. Of course you do. Who wouldn't? Who doesn't? We need the metanoia, the outward change in your actions. That is the real and lasting change. That is based on a true change of meta change, noia, heart and mind. A real change, a true change, a change that matters, a change that supersedes that one circumstance and situation that you say you regret or that you're sorry for. This is why John, metanoia being the, the noun, repentance, a thing, the thing. He would say metanoio, which is the verb, repent. And they were supposed to come correct. Let's read the latter portion of verse 8. And begin not to say, 
within yourselves. We have Abraham to our father, for I say unto you that God is able to, to take these stones and raise up children unto Abraham. What he was saying to them, you need to repent. Meta noio, meta noio, meta noio. Not just because you want to get off, but because you are truly changed. They thought, because they had inherited this culture, they thought they just needed to be Jewish, they just needed to be sorry, and they needed to show up to mikvah. They figured that was enough. But John made it very clear that more was required, and in verse 9 he says, And now also the axe is laid unto the root of the trees. Every tree therefore which bringeth forth not what? Good fruit. Is what? hewn down and cast into the fire. So if it wasn't clear up to this point, is it clear now? It's clear now that the people hopefully got the message. And if we, as we look at verse 10, thank goodness every pastor, every preacher, every prophet, anybody that teaches or, or ministers to the people, the people of God on his behalf want to hear this, what he heard in verse 10. Music to any preacher's ear. It says, and the people asked him, saying, what shall we do then? Do I hear you all saying so? What shall we do then? Hopefully at some point in your life, if not today, sometime in your life, you said, Lord, so what shall I do? What can I do? Does that sound familiar, by the way? What shall we do then? As if you're Bible readers, you should, this should sound familiar to you. And if not, it will in a few minutes. Let's go to verse 11. Hallelujah. Verse 11 reads this way. It says, he answered and said unto them, after they said, what shall we do then? He said unto them, he that hath two coats, let him impart to him that hath none. And he that hath meat, let him do Likewise, I, I know I'm, I'm looking at the time and I want to give you everything that what God wants you to have. And I want this to get deep down inside of you. So I'm going to take pastoral license and I'm going to take my time here. You're going to leave here today educated. You're going to leave here today. Hopefully change. You're going to leave here fully understanding. I need some volunteers. Do that for me. Somebody. I need somebody right here. Come on, somebody right here, you, and you're going to get, whoever, whoever's willing to be right here, great. You're going to be my, you're John the Baptist. You stand, stand right here, John the Baptist. Now I need somebody right here who's willing to sit right here. Thank you, Adam. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. It won't be hard. You, you don't even have a speaking part. Amen. Now, now, what I want you to do is I just want you to, uh, uh, when it says, you know, if, if, if you have two coats, Go and get one of them and give, give it to the one who, who doesn't have it. And, and they weren't talking about coats the way we talk about it. But let's just use our kind of coats because it makes sense for the example. And it's fine either way. Amen? So I just need you to be cold, Brother Adam. I just need you to be cold. Okay? Uh, what, you say, John, John, you say, okay, what should I do? Go and get my coat. I have two of them. Okay. Let's see. I had a red one. Yeah, I actually have more than two coats. All right, great. I'll take this one. Uh, this is not my favorite one, so I'll take that one. And I'll give you the coat. And now he's warm. All right. <laughs> not good? Okay, that, that's not quite it. Okay, I'll tell you what. Now I'll just need you to be hungry. Oh, grab your stuff. Oh, my goodness. And if you want, you can put out a cup. It's like, oh, just give me some money for some food. I'm going to go in my cupboard. Great. Oh, my goodness. I didn't know I had so much food. My food has food. Oh, my goodness. I've got so much food, half of it's expired. <laughs> Obviously, I couldn't find it, so I bought some more food just like it. And now, oh, my God. Okay, I'll take some of this food. I'll tell you what. Here you are, brother. God bless you. Hallelujah. How am I doing? I'm not doing so great. Well, I, you know, I came here, I just came from revival, and I'm saying, hallelujah, oh, wasn't that a great revival? High five of my friends, and I just walked right past this guy, but I didn't walk past him this time. I got my food, I got my coat. That's not enough. Okay, thank you, Brother Adam. You get an Academy Award. You can go back to your seat. 
Uh, I didn't say John the Baptist could go back to his seat. <laughs> Can I have a do-over? Thank you. Oh, man. Okay. Oh, my. I had no idea I had so many clothes. Oh, my. I have more clothes than I can wear. I haven't worn that for 10 years. I can't even fit it, but I'm thinking I might fit it later. <laughs> oh, my goodness. How many? Oh, oh, and this food. Why am I? Am I building bigger barns? Am I? Am I? Selfish? Have I become indifferent? Are my treasures built up here? Am I laying up treasures here? Oh, oh, I see it now. Oh, I'm just, I've been walking past this brother. My brother's like him. And I have more than I need. Oh, I'm sorry, Lord. I'm a sinner. I need to be cleansed. Please give me the tevilo and the mikvah. I get it now. I get it now. It's not just about the coat. It's about me. It's about my heart. And God is right, and I need him, and I'm wretched on my own. And my simple acts of so-called goodness are not good enough. You wanted me to understand I can apply this to other parts of my life. It's not just the food. It's not just the clothes. Oh, my God. I, I, have not, I haven't been representing God, the God that I claim, the God of myself. I, I haven't been representing him. I haven't been a reflection of him. But I think I get it now. I'm ready. I'm truly repent. I am sorry, not just for today, not just for tomorrow. I'm sorry because I get why I've been wrong. And I'm not going to be the same again. I'm not going to walk past people who are cold the same again. I'm not going to walk past people who are hungry the same again. And I'm going to apply that to the rest of my life. Thank you, John. We have people who call themselves Christian, who have gone out down in the water, but who are going through the motions, celebrating services, a movement of their emotions, and walking right past their opportunity to be a light Amen. and to be salt on the earth. Amen? Amen. The expectation was that as he went to his closet and as he went to his cupboard, that he would realize in the process the real issue and not just bring back the article, not just bring back the form filled out with the boxes checked, but with his heart and his mind changed. Because if your mind is changed, you can apply the new you to every circumstance and situation in your life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You should be truly changed, not just a box checker. Let's go quickly to verses 12 and 13. Then came also the publicans to be baptized and said unto him, Master, what shall we do? And he said to them, expect no more than that which is appointed you. What is he getting at here? They used to steal from the people. They were representative of the Roman government, and the, and the Roman government said, take this much from the people, and then you can take this portion, and then they would take a bigger portion by getting more from the people. Amen? Stealing from them through selfishness and greed. And they thought all they needed to do with that in their lives is show up being Jewish to the mikvah and being sorry. No! You need to be changed. So he told them, don't exact any more than you're supposed to from those people. Verse 14, so the soldiers likewise demanded of him, saying, what shall we do? And he said unto them, do 
violence to no man, neither accuse any falsely, and be content with your wages. I'm, I'm, I'm about to wrap up for those of you who say this has been too long. They use intimidation and extortion, taking advantage of their position. Listen to me now. Taking advantage of their position. Do you know anybody that's ever taken advantage of their position and extorted people? Yes. Now you know why I say repentance has to start right here in the pulpit, right? Intimidation and extortion, taking advantage being through selfish greed. They needed a change. The lesson here being God's provision is sufficient. Do you know that in your life? Yes. God's provision is sufficient. And yet how many of us maneuver, manipulate, do things underhanded, are deceptive in order to get more than what God in his goodness would give you? You are willing to sacrifice your integrity and God's testimony in your life just so you can have more stuff just because I can and just because the world allows me to do something does not mean that it's right for me as a child of God to do I'm going to say that one more time. Just because I can and just because the world allows me to do it, the world may even encourage me to do it, does not mean that it's right for me as a child of God to do. Amen. Now, my hope is that up to this point, you really understand metanoia. You really understand the baptism even prior to Christianity because it wasn't new. Amen. And Hopefully you understand the connectedness and the meaning and the power of repentance. But now go with me so that we can connect the old to the new. Let's catch up and go to our baptism. Go to Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 2. You all know this. Amen. Jesus told him to go and wait in the upper room. Amen. So the Holy Spirit would come. Hallelujah. Acts chapter 2. And the day of Pentecost had fully come. These were just, these were celebrations in the Jewish, in the Jewish faith. Hallelujah. The Holy Spirit is now falling on them in the upper room and Peter preaches his very first sermon. And here is the response to Peter's sermon and we will go to verse 37. It says, now when they heard this, they were pricked in their hearts. They were moved by what he had to say because what he did is very eloquently and effectively connected the Old Testament and the Intertestament to what is now the New Testament. He made it plain for them so that all of these being Jewish could understand that the Messiah has come and he has done what he needs to do. Now all you have to do is receive it. But with repentance. So now when they had heard this, they were pricked in their hearts and they said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? Does that sound familiar? Sounds like they're ready to hear. What shall we do? Verse 38, then Peter said unto them, repent, metanoio. Amen. I'm commanding you. I'm instructing you. I'm adjuring you to repent. Make a change in your heart. Make a change in your mind. I'm not offering you a checklist. I'm offering you change. Amen. And he baptized every one of them. And in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission, the removal, hallelujah, the release from their sins. And ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Sound familiar? Metanoia, oh, change your mindset, change your heart, which should then change your actions. Because you give me actions without the heart, it does not affect the scale. You give me actions without a change of the heart and mind, and you show up selling wolf tickets at the pearly gates of heaven. You cannot enter in. It will not be enough. Because many will say, Lord, Lord, I did all this religious stuff in your name. He'll say, I never knew you was never, ever any future in your front. 
be changed from the inside out. And yes, be baptized. Have the tavila in the mikvah, amen? In the name of Jesus for the remission of your sins. So now, what's different? Two baptisms. One before the cross, one after the cross. One before Jesus made the sacrifice and went in the Garden of Gethsemane and made that decision, one after the falling of the Holy Spirit. What's the difference? The blood of Jesus is now applied. That's an important difference. Amen? Amen. And it only needs to happen once. We didn't have to go and sacrifice all these animals over and over again. We now have the one Passover lamb that we need. What's different? We have the authority that's in the name of Jesus Christ that's now been invoked. That's different. What's different? We have the Holy Spirit, the comforter, the teacher, the instructor. He says, I have to go away, but I will not leave you comfortless. That's what's different. And now I get to have eternal life. The judge is going to say, he's okay. I'm taking away his guilty sentence. And it's true for good. That's different. Amen. I have the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. I have God with me all the time. But all of that being different, what's not different? They both require meta noga. They both require a real change. So I'm wrapping up now. I made better time than you guys thought I was going to. With God's help, I've given you everything I have. Everything he wanted me to say, I can stand up here and say, I did it. Now, it's my job to give you the absolute best to take you back there so it's like you were there. So we talked about some cultural stuff. We talked about some historical stuff. We talked about some some Hebrew and some Greek. So now you are trilingual. (laughs) Some of you are more than that. But it doesn't really matter if you remember any of that. The Greek and the Hebrew and the meanings. I do expect you to know metanoia and metamelomai, though. Okay. But what you should come away with is an understanding of the beauty of God's continuity in his plan. Ah. You should come away knowing why we need Jesus. You should come away knowing how and in what ways we as people of God, as witnesses unto Christ, should be different. Being changed from the inside out. Cleaning house, not just painting the eaves and painting the trim and saying it's all good. You should come away with an understanding and hopefully a a rejuvenated commitment to let your light so shine in the darkness of this world. And it's getting darker every day, especially in this age. So do this with me. Let's all say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for coming down here and doing what you did and looking beyond my fault and seeing my need. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for not saying no in the Garden of Gethsemane. Thank you for taking all the slaps of the crown of thorns. Thank you for not getting down off the cross just because they talked about you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God, for not having pride and caring about me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Thank you, Jesus. And to God be the glory. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, God. Thank you, God.